Thank you for your, your kind words and can I thank colleagues for raising the issue and for the contributions. I've listened very carefully um, to what's being said. I, I, I want to start by again acknowledging the extraordinary distress and anger and fear and frustration that all of this is causing. There are 20 families directly in, in, involved, 20 boys and girls, <clears throat> young men, young women, one of whom has passed away, all of their families, and so many other boys and girls, young men, young women, and their families waiting for care. Or as Senator Clonan has said, for whom it is now too late to get the care that they need. My focus, and I know all of our focus, remains on the people who were directly affected by this, be it the 20 families or all those in need of these services and indeed those who, who are continuing to use these services. Um, and I know there's a lot of anxiety, there's a lot of upset, there's a lot of anger. And they're right to be angry. Because a lot of these children have been failed by this state. And we haven't got it right yet. We have not fixed this yet. Um, many of those who are using Temple Street services for spinal uh, surgery and for spinal services are asking very legitimate questions about what has happened in this specific case um, in regard to these 20 families. Um, they're asking questions about clinical care, they're asking questions about medical devices, they're asking questions about um, whistleblowing, safety protocols and, and many other issues, many of which have been um, referenced already. And people are asking broader questions. They're asking broader questions about paediatric orthopaedics in Children's Health Ireland. They're asking very legitimate questions about governance, about patient safety, about patient communications, about patient engagement. During the Dáil statement last week, I outlined the background to how we got here. And so I, I won't reiterate that. Uh, I'm sure colleagues will have. Um, colleagues are clearly up to speed on what, is, um, what has happened. So what I want to focus on today is what has happened since then, what has happened uh, since the statements in the Dáil last week, and as colleagues have, have asked for, what's going to happen now. I met with uh, Mr. Nyag, I'm the external reviewer, on Monday, on Monday evening in the Department of Health. The Chief Executive and I met uh, with Mr. Nyag. It was a very good meeting. It was a very constructive meeting. It was a very positive meeting. Um, and I am very grateful to Mr. Nyag for agreeing to lead this work. He is a pediatric orthopedic specialist. Uh, he will be bringing in spinal, pediatric spinal specialty as uh, as, as required in other specialties uh, as, as, uh, as required. He has been provided with a completely independent secretariat to support him. He's been complete, so it's not the department or the HSC staff moving in to support the work, as would sometimes happen. It's an independent group. He's also been provided with an independent legal uh, firm to get advice directly on any and all issues that he wishes, including ensuring that we have a report that can be published. We're all acutely aware in the Oireachtas of some of the problems we have in terms of publishing, uh, publishing reports. So what I've asked him and what the Chief Exec has asked him is, is just to, 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 to try to make sure we can publish this report. I don't want a report sitting on my desk that can't be published. Um, the need for an independent external review is clear. I think we all accept it. The independent review at Temple Street and across Children's Health Ireland. So it will cover Temple Street, it will cover Crumlin, it will cover Kappa where that is relevant, it can cover Black Rock where that is relevant. Black Rock's uh, facilities have been used for, um, for some of the less, less, complex, uh, less complex work. It will cover all of that. Mr. Nyagam has been told directly by me that he can go as wide as he wants, he can go as deep as he wants, and that we want no stone, and I want no stone left 
unturned. We want nobody's blushes spared. We don't want um, political language, not that I believe he would entertain such a thing anyway. We, we, we're not looking for um, polite responses and recommendations. We want the pure, unvarnished truth, bad and good, because there are a lot of good things happening as well, which is not our focus today, um, but, uh, but, uh, but, but, uh, but both. Mr. Niagara made the point to me that the first people he wants to hear from are the 20 families. The advocacy, advocacy groups as well, of course, but in the first instance, the 20 families. And he knows, and I have said to him directly, that he has full scope to adjust the draft terms and reference the draft objectives in any way he wants, based on what he hears directly from the families affected, based on what he hears from the advocacy groups. Um, some of the advocacy groups have met Mr. Niagam and have stated publicly that they found it to be, um, to be useful and they're going to engage in, uh, in, the, in the review. Um, I've held individual meetings with some of the advocacy groups. I held them last week. The Taoiseach and I met several of the groups last Friday in government buildings. Engagement is ongoing in relation to, the, to their involvement. Um, in the external review, uh, Mr. Niagam is going to listen very carefully and is now listening very carefully to groups and families who want to meet him, whilst I fully respect there are groups who at this point are not meeting him, fully, 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 fully respect that position as well. This moment must be a watershed moment in terms of addressing the issues in our paediatric orthopedic services, which every one of us know have um, been tolerated for too long in our country. Um, as colleagues are aware, an additional patient safety concern was reported uh, to CHI in, um, or by CHI rather, in July, late July, and then in early August to me, concerning the use of non-CE uh, springs. Uh, and this is very concerning, because whilst no findings have been made at this time in terms of the surgeries where there was a higher than expected level of return, no findings have been made at this time, it is absolutely clear that non-medical grade equipment cannot end up inside the human body. Has been, and has, has been stated, of course, innovation means that devices not intended for a specific purpose can be considered and are considered and must be considered, such as the nature of innovation. Within that, it is taken as a, as a, as a given, and there are numerous protocols in place such that whatever devices are used, in whatever way is agreed, they are medical grade devices. We don't put medical grade devices inside the human body. And that has happened here. Uh, and it is very serious. So today, I've written to the Chief Executive of HICWA, the Health Information and Quality Authority, to request that they conduct an independent statutory review of the use of the non-CE spring implants during those three spinal surgeries in Temple Street. I've also asked HICWA to review the controls and the oversight processes and the governance across Children's Health Ireland on the use of surgical implants, not just these springs, surgical implants and implantable medical devices, including the processes around the regulatory requirements and the notifications. The need for wider assurance was raised directly to the Taoiseach and I by patient advocates at the meeting we had last Friday. And the second part of the HICWA review is in direct response to the concerns uh, that they raised with us. We're following up on several other concerns and issues raised by the advocacy groups involving both hospital and community-based services for patients. And it's important to say we focus very understandably on the hospital care and on the surgeries. But as has been raised with me by the groups, there is pre-hospital care, there is in-hospital care, there is post-operative care, and then there's just ongoing care. 
there's, there's provision of medical devices, there's housing adaptations, there's access to primary care teams, physiotherapy, uh, multidisciplinary primary care, and all of that is being looked at, uh, not just the hospital work. Pediatric spinal services, including spina bifida and scoliosis, um, were prioritized uh, by me and by government in both the 2022 and the 2023 waiting list action plan. 19 million euro of public money, both current and capital investment, was committed specifically to tackling these waiting lists specifically for that purpose. Since then, that investment has led to a very substantial increase in the number of surgeries that are happening. Last year, there were about one-third more surgeries than in 2019. Now, that's very, that's very encouraging. So for every four surgeries in 2019, three surgeries in 2019, there were four surgeries in 2022. Um, so that is Encouraging to date, 151 additional healthcare professionals have been hired as part of this push to increase capacity. Extra beds have opened and there's additional capacity has been put in place as well. However, it's not enough. In spite of this very important increase in the number of surgeries being performed, the waiting lists are not falling. And ultimately, that must happen. Right now, additional capacity is being added, which comes from that 19 million euro. In the coming days, a fifth theatre in Temple Street is opening. This was one of the core elements of the 19 million euro. In the coming weeks, a second MRI in Crumlin is opening. This is very important. I went to Crumlin very shortly after being appointed as minister. And one of the things they said to me was there are a lot of children waiting sometimes years for an MRI under general anaesthetic. The second MRI machine is being put in place explicitly to address the waiting list for children who are waiting for MRIs, including for those waiting for MRIs under uh, general anaesthetic. There's, there are 24 beds across Temple Street and Crumlin, as well as additional ICU beds, not funded out of the 19 million, but additional ICU beds, 24 acute beds, um, f as part of the 19 million. Many of them are in place and the rest of them are coming online uh, in the coming weeks. This additional capacity is going to make a difference. This additional capacity means more theatre time, uh, more access to beds, access to ICU, access to MRIs and diagnostics. And so the clear intention, obviously, is with the extra capacity, the number of surgeries increases. Everything that uh, we have done and everything that we're going to do in response to the waiting times obviously is to serve the patients. But this additional capacity that we're talking about bringing online in the next few weeks, including the next few days, that in and of itself is not enough either. There's a draft plan for changes to how spinal services are managed uh, I am interrogating that plan in detail. I'm talking to experts in pediatric orthopedics, in pediatric spinal services. We are evolving that plan. I think there are more things that need to be done in terms of consolidation of surgeries, in terms of dedicated beds, uh, in terms of post-operative teams, dedicated theater teams, central management of waiting lists, changes to governance, changes to clinical governance, uh, and, uh, and more. All of this additional capacity and the changes, some of which have been made and more of which we will make, have one simple goal. To make sure that the children who need these services get access to them when they need them and get access to them in a way that they know and they are confident are absolutely world-class services in terms of patient safety and patient care. I have no doubt that through the review that Mr. Nyagam is conducting, that he will be able to come back with additional recommendations. I believe that the families involved uh, have a valuable input. I believe the advocacy groups have a valuable input. I believe that the frontline clinicians 
the surgeons, the theatre staff, the ward staff, uh, the anaesthetists, the health and social care professionals, the people actually delivering these services need to be listened to very, very carefully. And between them and between the families and the advocacy groups and Mr Nyagam's work and whatever expertise we need to pull in, we will design a service that befits our republic. We've never done it. This isn't a political issue. It's a political, it's not a, it's not a party political issue. Obviously, it's a political issue. Um, none of us are going to rest until these services are fit for the children and are fit for the republic that we live in. So can I just thank colleagues again for the opportunity to listen to your input and the opportunity to update the Shannad uh, on what's happened in the last week and on uh, where we're going. Gurr